take a look at my research that I did, and I found out it also helps patients with osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, elevated cholesterol, worn cartilage, depression, diabetes, and bone damage. Wow, it's amazing. We should put that in the water. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I guess moving on to the next peptide, um, we like talking about, uh, HGH. People often ask us like, you know, do I need a growth hormone peptide or do I need to go on Omnitrope or whatnot? And there's one called AOD9604 with interesting evidence. So I'm a patient again here and I'm disappointed because tesofensine isn't really a peptide. So I'm going to move on to the next weight loss peptide on my list. Mm -hmm. And I want some AOD9604. And in addition to weight loss and fat burning and being basically growth hormone without any of the downsides, take a look at my research that I did. And I found out it also helps patients with osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, elevated cholesterol, worn cartilage, depression, diabetes, and bone damage. Wow. It's amazing. We should put that in the water. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it. Wait, but if it lowers cholesterol, I don't know if I want it. True. Yeah, it would be a lipid medication. You only want things to increase cholesterol, like testosterone. Exactly. No, but all kidding aside, um, this medication was being developed for obesity uh, mm -hmm. because it didn't seem to induce the same insulin resistance that you ran into with growth hormone. Yep. And it just wasn't particularly impressive or it wasn't impressive enough in the clinical trials. Uh, had good safety data. Yeah. The most impressive trial result was a 12-week trial and patients were taking this as an oral capsule, uh, which usually peep this is thought of as being injectable, but oral capsule formulations yep. were available at this time. About a milligram per day, and they lost 2.6 kilograms versus a placebo group, which lost 0 0.8 kilograms. So yep. three to four pounds of extra weight loss over 12 weeks. Um, I mean, that's not insubstantial, but yep. when they ran the longer trials, they didn't see the continued effects where they were getting the endpoints that they had set, which is probably mm -hmm. something like weight loss of 10% body weight or something of that nature. By the way, this compound is also known as GH frag. They literally just took um, GH and chopped the amino acid sequence or the peptide part of HGH that they thought was going to lead to less insulin resistance and more of the uh, lipolysis and weight loss benefit. There is one group of patients that in particularly in particular will benefit from this, and that is if you were a New Zealand rabbit. That's right. If you combine this peptide with hyaluronic acid and you do a series of intraarticular injections mm -hmm. after you put collagenase in the intraarticular space, mm -hmm. then you will have improved collagen regeneration if you are a New Zealand white rabbit. Correct. So, so that if is, there are any white rabbits out there listening, this peptide may be for you. Yes. Uh, or I, I suppose perhaps if one of your pets is a New Zealand white rabbit and also has had collagenase injected into their tendon, it could be very applicable. But in all seriousness, the, the most common formulation of this peptide that we do prescribe is in topical form. So in very low doses, Often it's combined with other things like GHK copper peptide, which we'll speak about later, especially in um, older patient populations. And we do think it's uh, reasonable in a lot of cases as a topical cream. Yeah, I think that's a, a good way to reduce the risk. And there's a number of peptides that are used in topical yeah. versions, things that are even over the counter in topical preparations now. Mm -hmm. um, so perhaps we'll have a cosmetic peptide episode at some yep. time for part two. One quick note on cosmetic peptides, because it's too funny not to say, I love how it seems like every skincare company or every aesthetics company has a, a peptide cream or a peptide serum. It, they never say which peptide is in it. So that's, that's just particularly frustrating as fans of mechanism of action and pharmacodynamics.